and welcome back to Baldy Cats. Now, if you've not seen him before, meet Kent Hoven, one of the world's leading young earth creationists. My name is Kent Hoven. I live in Pensacola, Florida. I taught high school science for 15 years. And now I travel and do seminars on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. So our position is the Bible is true, evolution theory is uh, seriously wrong, and one of the dumbest and most dangerous religions in the history of the world. Now, if there's anything that Kent Hovind hates more than evolution, it's people that disagree with him. So much so that he likes to whack them in a, a weird, twisted, Sunday school version of The Sopranos. Anyway, we're going to whack an atheist tonight. When they stick their head up, whack. Oh, hang on. Whack them back down. Now last month it was my turn to get whacked off and Kent Hovind in his usual style did a fantastically incompetent job and I am always absolutely amazed just how consistently incompetent Kent Hovind can actually be and I do really tip my hat off to you there so it can't be that easy. Um, but why was Kent Hovind annoyed with me? Well it all started when I debated him about evolution on a Marvel Girls channel and in Kent's own words... I wasn't prepared. Yeah, exactly. Despite being someone who's had over 30 years experience of campaigning against evolution being taught in schools, and despite being somebody who's a self-proclaimed expert on evolution, who's had over 300 debates on the subject, Kent Hovind seemed remarkably unprepared to talk about any topic at all. So much so that we wrote a song together about it, and you guys just won't let him forget it. Housekeeping genes. I'm not prepared for that. The evolution theory. I'm not prepared for that. We have inserted DNA code from an ERV. I'm not prepared for that. Radiometric dating. I'm not prepared for that. Dimension ring species. I'm not prepared for that. You have to tell me why this is not proof of the closed system. You must not have heard me, son. I said, I'm not prepared for that. Now I had a great time filtering through all those comments on Kent's channel, but it's fair to say that he is not a happy man, hence him wanting to have me whacked off and all. Um, he's even got to the point where he started making prank phone calls. I'll just call him. There we go. Hang on. There. Okay. Hello? Conspiracy cat. Hey, Kent, how are you doing? You right? Pussy. So, did you just call me a pussy? Yeah. Right. Anything else? Listen carefully, oh. Mr. Plotting Pussy. Go on. You're going to be dead. I want to go now, Kent. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> So the scene is set, Kent Hovind is definitely not happy with me and he wants to have me whacked off. And he's going to do it by talking about ERVs. ERVs or endogenous retroviral insertions are, in my opinion, one of the best evidences for evolution. And I made this point to him in our debate. Now, if you don't know why ERVs are excellent evidence for evolution, we'll get to that later on in the video. But the surprising thing is, Kent Hovind, after 30 years of campaigning against evolution being taught in schools, didn't know what they were. Conspiracy cats. Uh... I can't see that he ever uses his real name. Anyway, uh, he's not. He said I was not prepared to answer his assertion that ERVs are evidence for his religion of evolution. I'd never heard that one used before. Now, Kent Hovind doesn't need to know what ERVs are to prove me wrong because he's got his own resident expert, Matt Powell, to do it for me. All Kent needs to do is phone up Matt Powell. Matt Powell needs to answer the phone, and then he can put me in my place. What could possibly go wrong? Well, first of all, you've got to make the phone call. I'll just call him. There we go. Hang on. There. Okay. And then you've got to remember to wait for the other person to answer before you start the conversation. Hello. Matt, we are... Oh, you didn't answer yet. So when Kent had actually managed to finally navigate those tricky waters of making a phone call, all that was left for him to do was establish the credentials of his resident expert. I'm sure Matt Powell knows an awful lot about ERVs. Is there anything else to add on ERVs uh, from your side? Um, not really too much. It's interesting. I haven't really heard too much about it before today. I know. It is spectacular, isn't it? Kent Hovind's expert on ERVs hasn't even heard about ERVs until today, which puts us in a massively unique position whereby Kent Hovind actually knows more about a subject than somebody else, despite that other person being his expert on it. It's all very confusing. But when you're in a position like that, there's only one thing you can do. 
Google it and read it straight from the screen. For those who don't know, endogenous retroviruses are viral elements in the genome that closely resemble and can be derived from retroviruses. They are abundant in the genomes of jawed vertebrates. They comprise, comprise 5 to 8% of the human genome. Now, trust me, Kent did an awful lot of reading straight from the screen in his stream, and I have linked it in the description so you know that I'm not lying, but he's also obviously done just a little bit of research about viruses before the stream has started, because he has learned, are you ready? Viruses are small. Well, now, did you get into uh, at all in your study how tiny, how incredibly tiny these iris vase are using Igpe Attenlay here? Now, at this point, Kent Hovind, who is, remember, one of the world's leading young Earth creationists, has actually said something correct, that viruses are small, and he knows he said something correct, so he's not going to leave that subject alone. Like a broken record, he's now going to teach us everything he knows about viruses. They're one millionth of an inch long. That's the length. So incredibly tiny. The diameter is way less than that. And bacteria are really, really, really tiny. Smaller than a period on a page that exploded. Much smaller than most human cells. They're about a thousand times smaller than bacteria. Here's a chart showing the relative size of different things. The fact that it's smaller does not mean it's simpler. How small are they? Very small so small that they cannot be seen without a light microscope. These things are so incredibly small. Well, I for one really am benefiting from your stream, Kent. Um, anything else you want to tell us about viruses? These things are incredibly tiny. Right, well, I think we'll move on from that. Um, anyway, after establishing two things, number one, that things can be small, well done, Kent, and number two, that neither Kent or his resident expert have any idea what ERVs are, they decide to play a game of what I like to call stupid tennis, where they bounce back and forth the most stupid comments they can possibly think of in an effort to try and discredit evolution without ever saying anything vaguely scientific. I wonder who will win. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this very special edition of Stupid Comment Tennis. Not Powell to serve. The car and a boat are related, maybe because they both have an engine. Toyotas and uh, uh, Mitsubishis both use metric nuts and bolts. Ah, that's proof they're related and they evolve from a skateboard. An ink pen and a squid are related because they both scored ink. We all came from a dot of nothing exploding. Oh, Kent Hovind, well done. I think that's won it. you played this game before, haven't you? Yeah. Anyway, let's get to the business end of the video where Kent Hovind's resident expert, Matt Powell, the guy who's never heard of ERVs before today, suddenly transforms into Dunning-Kruger man and shows us all how easily they can be debunked. But not before he says something correct. Basically, ERVs, they are known as a big proof of evolution. And a lot of people will say that it's the number one proof. I've heard several times but it's the number one proof. And he is correct, but exactly why are ERVs such good evidence for evolution? Well, I have made a video solely dedicated to ERVs on this channel before, so let me see if I can just sum it up to you in exactly 60 seconds. To cut a long story short, when a virus enters one of your cells, it sticks its own genetic material into your DNA, and we call that an insertion, and they look like this. Really? Yes, they're very easily identifiable and they remain in your genome. And in this example here, I'm representing all our genome with the big blue line and the small red dot represents the insertion. That's dumb. Thanks, Kent. Now, if that insertion happens in a cell that goes on to become a sperm or an egg, it is passed on to your offspring. Now, as your offspring grow and age, they may receive insertions of their own, which can then be passed on to their children, which is shown in this diagram. And what we'll also see is, as these are passed through the generations, a long terminal repeat, which were the bits of DNA at the sides of the insertions, become less and less similar as they're affected by mutation. Now, the insertion points for ERVs are spectacularly random, meaning it's almost impossible for two of the same insertions to appear in the same point by chance. This makes them very, very useful for tracing lineage, as we've done here in this very simple example. And full enough, the genetic trees based on ERVs match our fossil records. And there you go, I did it in exactly 60 seconds. Because I cut this bit off. For example, it only took me 10 minutes to find all these examples here of how ERV insertions do support our fossil records. So exactly how does Dunning-Kruger man, who's never heard of ERVs before today, go about debunking them? Um, I would say it's the number one proof of creation. 
you know, right. we can just turn this around on them based on the fact that actually 14 of our human ERVs, because everybody has them in their DNA, are found in the same location as chimp DNA. So they'll say, well, see, 14 are found in the same place. But what they leave out is that we actually have 98,000 ERVs in our body. And so that means that we are 99.9998% different than a chimp. That's right. He just makes up some numbers that he thinks downplays the similarities of ERV insertions between chimps and humans. Now, I have looked and I've looked and I've looked and I can't find any study at all that says that chimps and humans only share 14 ERV insertions out of 98,000. I don't know where these numbers have been picked up from. Well, actually, I do. Okay, step one, type in this into Google. Step two, you're going to look for that Wikipedia page. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Step three, find the menu. No point reading it all, is there? Okay, now, what is the here I understand? Okay, I get that. That's a number. So we've got 98,000 uh, elements, so it says... I'm going to ignore that bit about them integrating millions of years ago, because that doesn't fit my young earth creationism. Uh, yeah, anyway, I've learned one fact now. I know how many we've got, so let's go debunk them. So to do that, we Google this. And I think we all know I'm going to click on the first link. First link is always the best one. And then uh, it looks a bit complicated, so I'll scroll down a bit till I find another number. Oh, I've got one. Look, it's the number 14. Hmm. Yeah, that'll do. As long as nobody asks me where I got my numbers from, everything will be fine. So armed with no citations, no evidence, no scientific understanding, and no previous experience on the topic, Matt Powell continues just to make stuff up. So our ERVs are different than chimps' ERVs, and we're completely different from every other species of animal out there in the location of their ERVs. Meanwhile, back in the real world, I was invited last month to do a collaboration on a channel called Pologia, and I have linked that video in the description. It's a fantastic channel, and he does a brilliant job of explaining exactly why ERVs are brilliant evidence for evolution. And in that video, he finds this little gem of a study. Now, this study concentrated on just one of the families of ERVs that have insertions in humans. And to be more specific, we're talking about 211 insertions in completely random locations. Now, of these 211 completely random insertions, the chimpanzee shares 205, which is 97%. And remember, these insertions are shared in the same random places. And you can obviously read the rest of the numbers for yourself. Now, I have to stress again that the location of these insertions is completely random. So the probability of these similarities happening by chance is, well, it's just negligible. So, Kent Holvin, going forward, if you're going to continue to talk about ERVs and how they aren't proof for evolution, I want you to talk about studies just like that. It's not enough for you just to tell me that viruses are small. The size of this thing isolated was... 250 nanometers. And it's not enough for you to bring on resident experts that know nothing about the subject, who just make stuff up. We, we have 99.999% of a difference between us and a chimp. And so if you round that off, that's 100%. We are 100% different. So Ken, in short, what I'm saying is, if you want to try and debunk the fact that ERVs are excellent evidence for evolution, then you have to start by at least showing you've got some understanding of why we use them as evidence for evolution. But before you go away and gain that understanding, can you please come on and introduce us all to your new song, I'm Not Prepared For That Too. I'm not prepared for that, Hovind's latest release. I'm not prepared for that. He's not prepared for that. I'm not prepared for that. Kent's still not prepared for that. So why do you refuse to debate conspiracy cats? I'm not prepared for that. Uh, 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 yeah. Conspiracy cats got one over on me. I'm not prepared for that. Somebody actually did a song. I'm not prepared for that. Okay, Kent, it's your turn. Take center stage. I'm not prepared for that. Yeah, you are. Now take it away. Okay. Yeah. I'm not prepared for that. Not, not, not prepared. I'm not prepared for that. Not, not, not prepared. I think it's wonderful. Okay.